excited to be speaking on running back play. Um, not only my bias, but I'm real passionate about this topic. I feel like I have a unique, um, a, unique, a unique point of view, experience, not just as a player, but as a trainer and also as a coach. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, with running performance, you guys know I'm, I'm head coach right now at Luther City Charles, but running performance has been something that I started man, before I even retired and moved back actually to St. Louis. It used to be hard hats. Um, we did all the positions and end up just really focusing on what I know, staying in my lane. Um, my foundation is playing at this position. And uh, one of the main things that we pride ourselves on is just educating players and coaches. I know we just we really work on the players, but coaches as well, on specifics of developing um, a complete Um Again, here's a little bit of background on the goals that we're trying to attain. And really, it's just the like guys' names, you know, all the cliche, maximize potential, and all that stuff. That's great. But I think the thing that really separates us is we have quarterbacks, running backs, receivers. Sometimes we have DBs. Anybody that touch a ball, they become a running back. That's how I tell them. Not just a ball carrier, but a running back. And I'll get uh, into that a little bit more as we go on. Again, Give a little background, this is more so high school and up, but as a youth, I started off playing guard. All right, I know here, I'm from Pennsylvania, Eastern PA, from a very uh, big and strong uh, football area. You know, the, the town stopped when we started playing, not just at the high school level, but at youth. And um, I was a guard, I was a striker, you know what I mean? And I think because I had that background, um, it helped me to respect the blocking, responsibility, understanding the whys of a play, um, and then also not being afraid of contact. I don't see some of the youth coaches in here, you know how the little guys, they shy away from contact because they don't really understand that. And shoot, I'll test, I got some high school players that don't, they don't get it. Um, actually, but this is just a little bit of background, I'm not gonna go through that stuff, but um, I will say in college, again, that experience, I had a, deep, a different position coach and offensive coordinator every year. And, I, and when you look at it, I played for uh, Bill Musgrave, Sparky Woods, uh, Tranquil from uh, Michigan State. So these guys came in and the offenses weren't even similar. So we had to learn a different offense, leaving from high school every year. And in high school, we were a few ones. John Marlowe I played with, was blessed to play the state championship. He was always in contention and uh, played against, you know, your Lamar Arrington. A lot of big dudes that was coming out on that, that western side of the state, and I got to understand your role as a back. We had those pounders. Everybody was going to Penn State, Michigan, Big Ten, Big Ten, and I was coming through. I'm like, I don't know if I'm big enough, so I skirted off uh, to go play at the ACC. And I think that's what really opened my mindset, of understanding that a running back isn't just touching that football and running through a hole as fast as possible. And then as I moved on to the NFL. On the contrary, I stuck with Mike, uh, Mike Marks for five years. Y'all know what they call him, Mad Marks. And so I promise you, I thought I understood football when I got to play underneath him and sit in the same room as a Marshall Falk. And then Steve, uh, young Stephen Jackson comes in that room. Those guys just opened it up to even tremendous opportunities to understand, okay, what does this game really mean and how can the run game help you win champion, uh, championships? And that's what I want to talk about. I understand everybody that's saying defense and championships, but the last time I checked, every Super Bowl, when we go to the highest level, and maybe you got some attention to this, the run game is so important on the offensive side. I think you have the best defense in the world, but if you can't run the ball effectively, typically you're, you're going to minimize the many wins that you get. All right, and I know right now, with the way the offenses are changing, everybody with the spread, flex, and all this stuff, some people are trying to reinvent the wheel, they're making it fit their guys, and they're changing year to year. But I still believe our concept of developing complete backs, uh, which we'll get into a little bit uh, more detail, is what really um, separates, separates us. Um, again, right now, where we are, Mel, raise your hand. Mel has definitely been with me for a while. Um, I tried different things, and um, he's been there from the beginning and really helped me put my ideas, not just on paper, but been there to help us uh, develop and progress. Um, through again, I have, you know a lot of guys I either played with or played against, and these are just some names, guys. If you're ever in these states or whatever, or you might know a guy, you know a kid, and things change. Um, I, I, I know 
know some guys that understand what we're trying to do on our own of developing the company that I search for. So the Lord's name, I won't go to those guys. So do you have what it takes to run it? I'm going to ask right now, just put up the first one. I'll put it on you guys. In your offense, ideally, what are the main attributes that you would want in your ball here? That's the obvious. So I just got that one up the way. Y'all can yell at me. Vision. Agility. Toughness. Agility. Patience. Knowledge of the game. Knowledge of the game. So this right here, we more stick with physic the, the physicality part of it. Well, we pick six things that we focus on. Speed being number one, and speed can be a couple of things. Not just breaking away, but also having that quickness in and out of the home and playing fast. We always say playing fast. Next one is balance. That, that, that combines with the jewelry, you understand? Because I have a lot of guys that come here fast as I don't know what, scary fast, but can't control themselves. They look sloppy, so they're not helping anybody out. Next one, obviously, power. And again, all these have to do with each other. Again, if you're fast, you have some type of fast twitch. Some of your glutes is firing off. You have some type of strength to be able to eat up the ground the way you do. But again, having that power, not fearing contact, all right, finishing your runs, getting your gaps is always a, a, a plus attribute. And then endurance. Again, you can have those first three things. But when y'all looking for that guy in the third, fourth quarter, and he disappear on you because he's not, he doesn't have no endurance at all. All right. And then Fonse is vision. This is a biggie. This is a biggie for me. Again, it's kind of a progression as you go through this. And these are more of a physical deal. Well, with the vision, being able to see things before they happen. I always brag, brag, and when I say brag. Marshall Falk took my game to a whole nother level. I knew, saw him at San Diego State, and I'm like, oh, how fast he is, the moves, and all that stuff. And when I realized that this dude's a nerd in a film, like he stayed watching film, he saw things before they happened. So as we watched it, he like, oh, God, oh, how do you see that? He put his foot in the ground, look down, all that stuff. He literally could articulate himself and explain what the play was meant to do, some broke down front side, but the back side, they had to do techniques, fronts, and all this stuff. And he leveled his game at such a pace that it was like he was out there just playing chess. He was playing chess and understood reaction versus anticipation. Lastly, all right, that brings it all together for me is attitude. Attitude. Again, you have all the stuff, that's vision in the world, but without that, you got a boy Zeke on there. To me, all of this stuff is irrelevant. This stuff is irrelevant. I always ask my guys, what's more important, attitude or effort? You have some people say some of the both. But in my opinion, if you have the correct attitude, they come up to you guys on the practice field, the game, they have the right attitude no matter how they fit feel, they get a stinger or whatever it is, they're going to continue to be able to display those for the first five attributes. Again, right now, we talk about anybody can run the football. We see it, we recruit, look at kids, man, you don't want that kid fast. Put the ball in his hands. Right? Put the ball in his hands. But the thing is, I know on the street, find anybody throwing the football. But in my opinion, ball carriers are made, complete backs are built. And this is what we want. Right now, I feel like the way football's going, I feel bad for defenses, but everything is working in the offensive favor. Right? And there's, there's, there's uh, pros and cons to that. But I feel like the running back position is having that identity crisis. And it, it, it makes me sick, especially right now, going you know, to combine and the, and the draft game, and talking about, oh, we're not going to pay the backs and shoot Z about the Rio. Is it really worth it? They talk about trading. And I step back and I'm like, wait a minute. If they really understood the importance of this position and how it ties everything on, in my opinion, outside of the quarterback, <coughs> Your running back is the guy. He's the guy. Again, as far as blocking, receiving, running the football, and then being able to, in my opinion, I know a quarterback, I know I've got my man back there. You can throw an 80 yard pass, they catch it, score. But I just feel like third and short, and you chuck a couple people, that crowd sounds different. Because that's an attitude thing, right? And you're making a statement. 
So this guy right here, Deion Lewis, those guys, both these guys here on the uh, Titans, playing on the same team. Right now, right? Shoot, my boy's going through it. People want to put their running backs in the box. Oh, you too short. Right? You too little. That's funny when I think about when I played in the league, I was actually an above size back at that time. And I played at 5'10, 212. I was above size back. The average weight was 201. 201. I, I've been there, people walking them all like, you play football, you small? So again, it's that, it's that stereotype that people don't get. Speed. That's decent. Right? We got guys in high school playing they running that now. You know, I know when we was coming through four or five and it's floating. Now these kids are dropping four threes and all that stuff. That's cool, but shoot. Four or five was floating at that time. So that's decent speed. So let's talk about Derek Henry. Totally different size back. And again, I played with Steven Jackson and I played against Brandon Jacobs. Freaks. Freaks of nature. Alright? When you're a high said, man, Nick, that kid DN, maybe a tight end, whatever it is. Look at, look at the difference in weight, 240. So he's faster. All right? So say all I have to say, whether you're youth level, high school level, as you move on, being able to embrace some of these kids, because again, you can make them if they're complete backs and they can fit your system. All right, and what it's for. I know it's three, four backs, now in the NFL, in high school, if you're lucky if you get two legit ones. Lucky to get to the gym. Alright? But ideally, if you have a guy right here, if you put a shadow right there and be able to combine them, that'd be your guy. Like Adrian Peterson type or something like that. But I always like to use this comparison. But once I saw that picture, I said, I gotta steal that. Just to show that because you know you got kids that feel oh, I'm too small, or, I'm not fast enough. Again, but as we start talking about some of the things that we concentrate on in the running back play, we build a progression. I need you now, though. We're going to go through this. As we talk about progression, the first thing that we talk about, when I talk about practice, clinics, or even just training, we always talk about ball security. I brought a high school ball, but we don't, again, I've been there seeing it. Some people have got eight points of contact, five, seven, yada, yada, yada. We just keep it simple with the boys that just going through uh, three. So with the eagle claw, I already mentioned making sure the nose can breathe, and just these two kickstands, I say, allows, right now, if I push, it's controlling that nose. We get some that holds that finger over top, or they close it up, or they're holding that thing like a baby bottle, so when they get tackled with all this turf and stuff, they jam their hands down and worry about how they carry that football the rest of the way. The next is just against the forearm, where most people stop. McCoy, right, he's from the Bills, he runs like, drives me nuts, as good as he is, and he actually don't have that many fumbles, well, he runs around with the football like that. Number three, we keep it simple, against your chest. Or I say that little indent that guy gave you, you squeeze against that chest and make sure your elbow down and the nose slightly up. All right? I know the, the popular thing is to say high and tight, high and tight, which I'm starting to not incorporate because I, we got a company that sent us some stuff that's called high and tight, but I will more so concentrate on the nose being high and tight, not the football. Now we get the Tiki Barber, you know, everybody's trying to copy off of that, but now you're restricting yourself, rolling your shoulders and not running comfortably. So that's it. I literally tell them, hey, hold the football, comfortable, everybody's a little different, and try to squeeze that elbow um, against the ribs. And we go over that, we've got some drills we'll show you at the end, how we keep reincorporating that. Our balance footwork, again, you guys probably see the bunch, the ladders, the agiles and all that, which we'll go over here in a little bit. But this right here, I feel our concentration on this part is what really is allowing kids to start seeing success. And I'm talking first, we got first graders all the way up to NFL, really some of those guys. So when you talk about point of contact, one of the main things I talk about, so if, I, if he's the ball carrier, I tell those guys, you're gonna try to make a defender do two things. Go base or turn his hips. Whichever one he does, he gotta be wrong. He gotta be wrong. And once we close that gap and you learn how to step on their toes, we have a drill where we literally have a guy stand right here. They can't have go go gadget arms. Once you get this, you have the yard outside of their framework, shoulders, to either break through them and finish behind them. We say inside their shadow. 
And just this little thing that we continue to concentrate on is again, even at the high school level, everybody wants to dance and then break outside and allow them either to cross space or now with what, the hawk tackle and the rugby tackle, even if they get here, they still go behind and roll and get some success. So our main thing is to attack, 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 and we iterate, step on their toes, make them go flat footed, return, and then once you get that yard outside here, you rip through, which we'll go through here, weapons, at the point of contact, we have a rip, we talk about the stiff arm, spin, all those different weapons, and when I get my little guys that are afraid of contact, I say, okay, they will clearly bigger than me. Let's say he weighs 300 pounds. I said, you want to run down the middle and take all 300 and get your top of that, or just cut him in half and go against 150? Cut him in half, always get his shoulders to open up, or we're breaking arm tackles. Again, we got some drills on video, which we'll uh, show in here, but I laugh when those kids that they, they got the drill, they had most fun when we talk about the point of contact. Stance, all right, common sense. I know three point stance, like what people still use that. Be surprised we still go over that. And then we build up to a point, two point, being able to understand whether we're in the back of the ground, that slot, or even out wide. Quarterback exchange. Again, I still got some high school guys, every once in a while I have a snap food, and they don't understand how to take a football. And some of these things I understand you guys, coaches, don't have the luxury to go through all these minute detail, details and practice. I want to show you a couple of drills that they can go off and do on their own, or if they can get out there early just to keep reiterating the importance of ball security and making sure when they get with the quarterbacks. I always tell them, I don't care if the quarterback puts it in the throat. When that ball gets to the ground, it's going to go to this stat sheet. It's never, ever the quarterback's fault. You can train the quarterback where to put the ball in. Right? Um, Pre-snap, defense recognition. Um, the way we do this is, and again, I, we got to shoot. First graders that will sit back here and we'll point them out and hit like three technique, five technique, that's a wide nine. If I'm gonna press outside, we're gonna make sure we keep our shoulders square and run through the school. I mean, they can say, verbalize it. And that's because we're helping them at an early age. You guys, the more you give them now, and especially in high school, you get a lot of guys out, man, to play to me to go here and I'm gonna use my athleticism to win. And understand just starting off basic and understand the techniques of the defense and their responsibilities. No one's saying you're going to be, go back here and, and sound like a great man, like a Marshall Falk type, but if I know the ball's going to the right, there's a three technique, I should understand his responsibility and then in return that play side linebacker what his gap responsibility is. And just being that, that pre snap read, things start to not only slow down, but you understand once I start pressing the hole, things break down. You should have a backup plan, and a lot of kids don't. Shoot, there's pros that don't. I didn't until I got with, again, Coach Marks and some of those guys to start realizing what plays were meant to be, and then truly understanding, not just recognizing, okay, shoot, what ain't three, four, or you youth guy 53, now take it to the responsibility. If I got if that guy's out wide and the ball, the play's meant to be there, okay, I can make those linebackers move. Me. All right, so. Go around a little bit. <clears throat> then the run game, whether it's inside or outside, we have our kids uh, break break the field in, in three quarters. I'm sorry, in half, and then that last one being able to understand how do you run the ladder and change guys' angles. No, I can use you real quick. And I laugh at uh, some of these guys and how they coach, it comes back, it works, it works. When we talk about running the ladder, you know, let's just say he's in the defense in front. We see the same thing, step on his toes. Once we redirect and the play's still going, he's going to chase. Once we go here and we take our steps, we keep changing our angle, but we got so many people, I'll just reverse it. Now go here and make him miss, they get on line and they stay on that line. And if this dude's faster than especially the edge get older, they can track it. I don't care if there's nobody at the next level, we have to run the ladder. And it just keeps changing our angle. And eventually that person's gonna quit. I'm like, come on, man, you ain't like, making moves on air. And it's just a it's a progression. As they go downfield, option ain't gonna run out of bounds. But um, it's neat to see, especially young guys, start getting confident once they get to a home. We say once you get in, you always get out. Pass protection. 
Yeah, as you go through the progression, say, Coach, when you just went through the run game, why would you jump backwards at me and then run block? Because once you teach kids how to block stationary, then they can move their feet. Understanding that getting that full triple extension, where their hand placement is, elbows down, thumbs up, and being able to do that as a pass protector and build their confidence up there, then run blocking becomes a lot, lot easier. Instead of drive blocking, and then you're asking them to sit down and anchor, the concept typically becomes foreign to them because they separate the two. So we're going to go with pass protection first, and then we roll into our run block. Pass game, uh, we have, I have a route tree. I know you guys have your own thing. And some of you guys understand, too. Some of you guys, I know, have I had some experience with some of your players. We don't come in and teach them any scheme stuff. We're not saying, oh, man, drop this foot, make sure you roll with keep J step. We're not touching that. We just concentrate on straight technique stuff. So with route tree, we've had guys come in, Kansas City, Iowa, and New Jersey. New Jersey is straight pounders. Never ran a route. But we still teach them what's the difference between not just a route tree, everybody goes through the numbers and the genetic route tree, but there's actually a running back route tree. And they're like, wow, I never knew that, coach. Well, yeah, we got to go through those things, understanding what a flat is. And we don't even teach them the terminology. Some people call it a flare. Some people call it a post. Some people call it a cross. Some people call it an angle route, angle return. We give it all to them. Seam, crease, just so we make sure we're not confusing them so when they get back to you guys, whoever they're playing for, they can, they can bridge the gap and put those things together. So we're not just teaching. I'm not teaching them the Rams offense. That ain't, I don't want you to think that. But we're just teaching them football. Um, and then receiving, growing through that, um, how to catch the ball, how to be effective with that. Um, I love this boy, he killed me to put him up here. The Cowboys. But uh, what we're going to do right now is talk. I'm going to show you guys some film. And again, give me some feedback on what you guys think. But the preseason, like as I said, some of these drills, you got questions about it, I try to pick not just stuff so we're like, it looks like we're reinventing the wheel, but some basic drills and then also some drills that we got. And I got all the of tools, I ain't gonna lie to you. So I ain't gonna show you, you know, all that stuff, but to keep the kids interested and also to challenge them on the uh, offseason. And then when we'll get done, I'll put this back up here, just some contact um, information on what we got going. But I'm ready for the, any questions, I'll try to go through there really quick. You will start with the uh, ball security one in that phone. <coughs> so probably hit, uh, when he shows, I guess he hit the escape and then hit that folder in the bottom left. Oh, no. Oh, cool. Sure. Yeah, I can't control it here, though. This right here, show you some of our ball security drills. Yeah, some of you might have seen, some of you might not have. Pause it real quick now. So this one, what, basically what they're doing is, they got the football, they're running, and some of them are chopping, they're trying to get them used to just running normal. And this arm does not move no matter what, at the point of contact. If you keep trying to get them used to hearing the point of contact, I know there's a little wiggle room once you get to the second, third levels, but right there where somebody's in front of your face and all this movement stuff, those guys are like Kyrie with the football, we try to keep those locked down. The guy in front of us pester him, pester him, pester him. And then it combines with our point of contact. You'll see these guys with urgency get inside that shadow as quick as they can. Go ahead and go. I should be up, not down. Boom, they get inside their shadow. You see how you pause again, those guys are opening their shoulders, and he trying to tell them, like, look, cut those guys in half. And you might have to just keep it on that bar. I got it all chopped up. <laughs> that second one, that three-legged monkey, you guys probably see that a million times. Hit, hit them some type of audible vision, put their palms flat and let them be strict. Not fingertips, a lot of them bang. Give them straight lines and get them to sink their hips and keep their eyes up. And some some will get frustrated when they fall forward. I'm like, dude, that's what it's all about. Falling forward and getting gas and fight to keep your eyes up and sink your hips. So you can see all these limbs are some type of flexion. That's not good. Alright, because he's straight. 
And I said, wherever your eyes go, that's where the ball and that's where your body's gonna end up. So this is more of a three-legged mon monkey of progressive forward. All right, now, you probably got to be quick on the draw because some of you are chopped up. So this one, you know, that's the same one. You can pause it. Now we're giving them a switch call. These two young kids, these kids are from Texas that came in. This little joke is a monster. But uh, you give a switch call, we give them a hit, boom, and getting used to it. You see these guys don't stop pestering them and getting used to it. Because a lot of times, when I get, the old kid will put cones out and they train by themselves, and they plant and they switch the ball here. I said, oh, no. You gonna protect the ball when you plan when you're redirecting. That's when you put the hand over the top, and the, before you even take that next step, that ball should be already gone. Because if you're coming here and you're playing, you're switching, you get contact. Typically, your pad level's up, and that's when that ball comes out. So we're getting them used to moving that ball around. I know I had a coach who's like, "Don't move that football." And that's fine, but we teach our guys that they're in that situation. It does happen to do it the correct way over the top, not coming off their body, and maintaining three points of contact. So he's still got the eagle claw forearm, and it's against his chest. He's just sliding across. He did a real good job. Once again, we always finish back inside the shadow. These guys right here, this is when I was, we were in uh, my area in Canada. We're also out here to work with their backs. Again, got some toys and some straps, creating that resistance. And the thing that we can do here, and I don't know if you guys might have them, there's formal pros and all that stuff is fighting to keep their shoulders square. And this is after a couple weeks of me beating them up of those guys were running and they're more pulling and they got no knee drive. But now it's like, look, keep your shoulders square, drive your knees. Because most concussions, I tell them, happens when someone puts their head right in the kneecap. It ain't when it hits you in the head, it's when their head goes in the kneecap. So we can be good enough. So you can see these guys getting their knee drive up pretty good, fighting to stay square, and we release them, accelerate with no hiccup, so they maintain their balance. See, this, this is a big boy, his legs are behind a little bit. So we combine it, three-legged monkey with the resistance. And when they stumble and they're falling forward, we always say maintain those three points, where the nose should always be slightly up. It don't matter how low you are or how, tired you are, how tall you are, and again, this wasn't really a running back. No, I know it's a But you can tell his, he got the same arm, same leg. This guy did a good job. But Ben in here, Kyle, he went to um, Kansas State and UCM. Boy, one of those things, his nose and his ball is facing down, so he looks uncomfortable. So his hip should be a little bit lower and maintain the uh, contact on the nose and the ball should be up. He goes now, it's going to happen quick. So, same thing. Changing up where you're going to get some of the resistance. So not just as a shorter strap, so not just in the back, but now being able to break those fingers. All right, those guys that desperation swipe, sometimes when they break, getting that resistance coming forward. And always, nine times out of ten, especially when y'all do it, somebody's either on the side or they're behind. Very rarely do we give them resistance coming from the front. And I took away his legs. He's a strong kid, just to make sure he's keeping that arm locked down and going cheek to cheek, just like a spread. We're good. This here, I actually love this in pads, where you got somebody locked in behind them, giving them resistance, and the same thing running through the gauntlet. Again, working on an attitude piece. You know, a lot of guys are shy from contact, but when you start seeing all these people, and again, it feels uncomfortable. But keep your eyes locked down. He cheated a little bit. I don't let them put two hands on the ball. See, it was swinging a little bit, and that ball came out. I don't, if you, can, if you can't protect the ball with two hands, something wrong. So I don't, we don't spend much time on that. Keep one arm, drive through, forward lean, and make sure you got no resistance and finish your run. So that's, that's what we do more so uh, with, with uh, ball security, we'll build the footwork. <coughs> no, you gotta get in, am I missing anything? Sideways and turn. So you'll see in all these drills, I make them stay square. 
So if I need to get to coach, I can get to him like this. With my shoulder square, I don't have to go like this because now I just cut off the field. And they start to understand that. And you show them, like, dude, I can run normal without having to go here and do a Barry Sanders or a drastic cut to get to that hole here. So I can keep my shoulder square, boom, and it cuts not just easier, but it's a lot cleaner. And my vision now becomes effective. So he's going through here, keeping the shoulder square, shuffling, not crossing over, and then just finishing through. And we got arches to make sure they're staying low. A lot of kids want to play high. And always, every drill you see, we finish in the shadows. And this is just footwork. Again, this one right here. Let me say this, let me pause that. I get the whole, my kids on Instagram, I don't throw cones and circles and all that stuff on the ground and have them like this. And, and, and just for likes and just have some other way. We make sure to supply. This is one of the few things where I actually have them turn their back on a defender, but we talk about when you reverse field. That hole close up, you get strike, you never stop. You bounce and you redirect. And you see we keep them tight and they're not bouncing out there. So everything that we do, we explain it. We give them the why. We don't throw stuff on here and just to look cute. So these, these kids get to understand exactly what we're doing. Why? Good. Again, just typical ladder drill. We'll always finish it underneath. No freeze. We we'll talk about splitting, and I get this a lot. Can't use the chair up here too. We talk about kids getting skinny. They don't know the difference. They, they'll go here and they'll go ball side down. Why? Like it's like a boxer. So when you got your guys, they get skinny, they get through here, that's fine. But typically, if that ball's on the upside, if I'm going through here and I squeeze through two chairs, the upside, and the kid's coming across his face, that ball's either coming out or you're going to hurt your hand. So we always say ball side down so you see what's going on, and you roll your shoulders just like a boxer. Right? When you tuck your chin here, your eyes are up. And that's when you get skinny at that last second. So we train them, and you'll see a couple of drills here in a couple of seconds. Once they get through a contact, they get skinny, and they get to split through and keep their eyes. There's a technique to some of this stuff. So we always talk about it. And we force them with two balls so we can understand, okay, which one's down and which one's more comfortable. Because that off arm, some of them will get lazy and give you that cheetah tail and expose themselves. So at all times, even if you tuck it here to, again, like a boxer, you want to make sure that offhand is still here. So that's why we use two footballs. Again, this one, the most basic one, my famous, one of my offset fans. My favorite drills, you can go back, it's just that pressure step and being able to go here. We get a lot of kids that got all the athletes in the world, you see them, shoot, fly that something where they go here, and you're like, woo! But they get here and they get stuck. But just being able to put it in and just get vertical and not put it here and redirect. Be able to put your foot in the hole, keep your shoulder square, and get vertical. And I have one over here so you can see on the side where we keep them honest with the poles and we tell them to peak. Because we allow them to do this, and it looks quick and it looks great, but we want him to go here. Again, we want them to go flat, redirect, or keep them honest with how they're going to uh, react. You don't know. See the other side, keep the hand up here. Same thing, I proved it. And this actually took him a while to get this. Uh, some of y'all might know Ray Harris from, uh, from West, as you see him. Being able to just play it, boom, boom, and still get progression going to 45, instead of always doing this and turning their shoulders. <coughs> back from the uh, yeah, we good. Wait, wait, go back, go back, go back. I think there's is that the one where. Yeah, go back, go back, go back to the beginning of that one. You need you to back now to raise that second one that I already did. This is the one, I'll see the beginning of this one. There you go. That's when we did the 45 degree cuts. In this next one, we did the replace drill on the back. You'll see him, and it's tight. You'll see him get in and get down the middle of a guy and then get right back on top. So it's like quick replace. This one. And we make it get to the middle of the bag and not be lazy and use their feet. That's another big one because again, we get around that yard and get back on top. So 
that would be true. Get set a pressure step and being able to have the power, do a good jump cut, staying on the base. You know, some, some of these kids get sloppy. This is the drill. See, you make a peak. They'll just come through and just do this and feel good, but we make them those poles that they're not picking on the other side. They're not doing it right. And it forces them to transfer that weight, that energy from side to side to be able to get in and out of their cuts. It's a simple pressure step back, pressure step drill. Well, we make them on that one get their toes as close as they can to that corner of that bag instead of just doing around cones. I just try to help them how close his foot is in that crack and being able to, with the length of that bag, turn this one so y'all can see. Someone will just go here, and again, you're not going nowhere, or they'll jump cut or do this, this, this mess. So we give them the pressure step, and by the length of that back, it forces them to get lateral and then vertical. So I know you guys have that equipment, y'all schools or y'all programs, it forces them to get that separation. Because again, we explain why. Pressure step, they'll do it naturally, but when they understand that this is the defender's body right here, and his arm is the length of here, you're trying to push and get separation from that arm. And then get vertical. So that's what that's what that drill is. And then I think we just change up some of the footwork and be a jump cut, stagger cut. Again, this one here is redirecting, just having good balance, presence of mind. Trey, wish she was still playing in the grass, but, but just being able to stay and turn this side of shadow, see how sloppy he was. And it does the same thing here, I'm trying to have the wherewithal like Saquon. Barkley is a freak with that. And being able to have body control and being able to stop him dying and know exactly where he is on the field. <laughs> go, go back a little bit to this one. And you can see some of these guys are learning. But we're forcing, so when we say we actually teach spin moves, if you want to spin, we're going to teach you the correct way. And we always tell this off of contact. So you got one kid want to be fancy and spin without having contact exposed his back, his back blown out. We say ball side down, same thing like we said when we get skinny, when we make contact, that's when you start to redirect and turn the side to shadow. So that those uh, hurdles right here make sure they get their feet up and then they're spinning to get separation outside this pole here. And when we have maybe one or two little right here, but, uh, Next one, that's one word. Point of contact. And now, real quick before you even start now. So you guys understand, we told them weapons, right? We give them weapons. When we go through, actually, yeah, now let's do what we did earlier. So we help them to explain the game. Protecting him, not just ball, protecting himself. So he's coming across. We always talk about ripping through. We get a lot of kids that do this. I was like, I ain't the brightest thing, but again, physics and momentum. I'm going here, and you're making my energy go this way. Where if we go here, and I neutralize and make your energy go this way because I'm down and I rip, we're always going to fall forward. Or like you said, the arm coming across, we're going to break that arm and rip through here. And I know stiff arms became very, very. Seems like every kid's doing it, but we help them explain when to use a stiff arm. In my opinion, it's actually out in front at an angle. It's not this. If you got a stiff arm, somebody right here, and you even, just run by him. Just run by him. So we'll work with this pad. Good thing because it has targets. So they'll run in place. We can shoot it across. We'll be stationary. And then we talk about hand placement. Again, a lot of kids want to do this and try to knock the bag out. We just talk about it as a jab, get a boxer. If you get them to snap their eyes, close their eyes, their head goes back, you should be two, three yards past them. And then when they're breaking, when we run the ladder and they get closer to the sideline, we make the sideline work for us and we talk about back shoulder someone. So that being able to hit their upfield shoulder or backfield or being able to cut without moving the ball. So we literally go through this thing like combat and they understand and we react and we talk about, okay, we get to use this one or this one, give them different scenarios. And then, um, yeah, it's the same thing when we talk about the, the uh, spin move and being able to cut somebody in half. But the rip, 
the rip, I'm really big on the rip. Because we'll go here and then go to the side, you can shoot it and time, and time it up. It's just like blocking. It's a lot of more you can use their elbow or flipper, but they get, got to get comfortable being able to make contact with their forearm and being able to always fall forward. And that's just repetition, repetition, repetition. Coach, I have a question. Yep. When you stiff arm, like so when I'm with my quarterbacks and they're running, I always tell them, hey, we, 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 when you stiff arm, what do you stiff arm with? Are you hitting them with this? Correct. Okay. Um, we say the meat, the meat of your palm. Right. So, so they don't think they don't even think this. The meat of your palm. Okay. That's okay. the hardest bone in your body. Is it is. full? Ex is it, are you looking for full extension yeah. or bow? It, this might happen. Right. But they all want teach. to do this. And, all we need is this, okay. and we don't. We don't right. need the, I know there's going to be the highlight. Yeah, they want to do it. Yeah. That might happen. They grab, so I always tell them, because when you extend, that means, again, everything's tighter within your body. Your core. Right. Once you extend, you're weaker, right. you're off balance. Right. And then I know what's happening to me before they grab a call and they take you for right. a little spin, right. you know, which I hate. But if you're able to strike and you continue to go forward, even if they get hands on you, it should be a hard time. Does that make sense? And how, by how, I know this sounds crazy, you were talking about stepping on toes. So by how close do you go before you, so you don't come early and you don't really get a full pop on? Timing. Timing. And we got one, we'll show blocking, we'll, we'll do it on the back. It's all timing. They got to, they, they got to know everyone's different. One kid might be faster, bigger, shoot lower, right. high, medium. We say, not even, you might not get to the chance to step on his toes. We say, smell his breath. It's typically what? Everybody's leaning their head to right. before their toes, they're leaning. Right. You smell his breath, that's when you strike. Alright. Just like those score drills, you see how it got skinny, ball side down, and let them pick. Again, redirecting, you gotta clean this thing up a little bit, or be able to pop and get out. Because a lot of them will lean away. Yeah, always finishing inside the shower. See how the throw the hips forward? I don't like that. Get the young guys. And this one right here, we do this because especially the guys that are doing a lot of zone, we, we teach it. Because a lot of them get here, especially younger guys, and you got to be able to keep your eyes and your shoulders might never be square, but being able to roll and get in and out of those breaks. And we start on contact, and then keep your eyes up, splitting in two. Get a little too high, stop his feet. Get people make sure they stay on that line. Same thing going back, beat them up. It's forcing these guys, not the cheap tail, keep their arm out front. You see that? That's terrible. And a lot of people do that on moment on line contact. Stuff this on the air too. Look at the rim. And we always say you should finish with your hand up, being able to exaggerate. Even the little guys can do it. They have a little bit more meat that can hit that shoulder. You should make contact with that forearm. Big difference uh, with our running backs. What we try to teach them is we want to steal another five yards after we get contact on the sideline. So we teach our guys to cut them in half, make them you initiate the contact because what most defenders go do? Defenders go use the sideline as their defender. So we steal another five or six yards off of them when we initiate the contact and not run out of bounds. I got a question, coach. Uh, you know, I know in the past, running backs have been taught to take the punishment or take the blow to the to the defender. Never let them bring it to you, you know, because their intentions are to bring you down. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it something now that we're going away from that where we're teaching, you know, you come, don't take a blow to them because when you take a blow to them, you're more taking your, your initial uh, power and being off balance to make that blow versus staying and just ripping the court real quick versus going and taking that blow to him 
and then you take yourself off balance. So you have to just tip and clean. Yeah. So that right there, your momentum's going that way. So that's why we use this. And I'm glad Mel said that we actually have a run at them. So typically this run out here, they say, oh, don't knock me out. If you watch, they're running at these guys. So even if they get back here, they go right back at this guy. Instead of getting boom, 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 and they stay there. And then the next guy, put, you know, he puts you on his highlight tape. So to answer your question, we don't say give all of them. See how you ran at him? We don't give all of it, but when you go here, because one of two things we keep saying, when you attack somebody, they're going to do what? They're going to go base. So even if they go base, you can't help it. They go base right there, you cut them in half. So that's why we say we use that term out of the point of contact. Instead of, like you said, giving that flow, you can keep them boom, trying to show all that. No, nah, keep on your line. If he threatens your line, you hold it. That's, that's how we, that's how we, does that answer your question? Uh, so I love this term. Or your rip, is it is it engaged with the shoulder first, then rip, or when it? When they contact with this, because if you hit my shoulder, I open. So if I'm coming, so if you're coming to get hit. If I'm running, just like a track, if I'm right. running here, it don't matter. He comes here, nothing changes. Bam. Got it. Bam. Okay. It ain't. Uh, okay. Come outside my frame. Right. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. And these are just using their vision. This guy's standing. I, we don't tell them where to go. We don't point. We say pick a side, exaggerate, step to a side, and let these guys react. And you can't be wrong. If you need to split, they'll just this one. No, no. You're right here. You're right here. <laughs> I'll put that on your front or so. Just running, splitting two, and not let those guys panic because they stop their feet. Like, oh, I missed the hole. Help you. Finish. And this is your see now. See how he uses wrists? And he's cheating and he's pinning up. He literally grabbed the bag. His arm's hit, but he actually did it right. We would do the same thing, keeping two. And not coming through. You see a lot of guys with the palm and come, they keep the ball in their chest, and I'll keep it down tight and just drive it, move the ball. So that sled, we can really use that sled to, to initiate that contact. The last one is the, is the block. Again, we go real heavy on pass for build their confidence. This right here exposes everybody. Because of the timing. See how they're natural? And they look wonky? Because they don't understand how to transfer their weight. Right? And being able to shoot their hip completely. And I told them they control that bag. And then keeping every street, they control that bag. So when you take them off, and they restrict their hands and get that timing because a little bit better. <coughs> then we start moving their target. So not everyone will just run right at you. Hands are holster striking. And that was terrible. No straight lines. And you see, I can try to fix it by getting a little flesh in the And we make them stay low, talk about the run block, and drive them out. And this right here, we did that on purpose. And we filmed it. So you see their head went through there, they, they don't control themselves. Make sure they come under. And we talk about throwing a flag in the ground. Run up there, throw the flag in the ground, and then strike. Coach, what did you mean by throw the flag in the ground? Basically, you control your area. So once you get there and you control it, you throw that flag in the ground. Whatever's coming, that's you move, that's to the point of contact, you control that. So you mean like that's your that's your territory? Correct. Like planting the flag. Correct. All right. And then see here we go. Again, if that's the end of the line of scrimmage, step in with that inside leg. You'll get a lot of guys either open or step with the outside, and they give a clean track to the quarterback or a soft shoulder. So leave a little sloppy, but make sure we're stepping with that inside leg. And then we do old school mirror drill. And make sure they're stepping. The most time everybody do mirror drill, and they go here, but they're not stepping. So that's why we put that back there to make sure they're conscious of what side they are on the line of screen. See a little bit, a little sloppy. So go back. So this is the last one where we actually put put it to use. See how he opened up? But I said, your butt, you should be able to draw a line for your butt right through your quarterback. 
And typically, you'll know they'll try to protect themselves by, like, yeah, go off field, and then I'm going to try to run you. But you see, you pay for it here. When someone goes down the middle of you, he didn't shoot his hands like he's about to be a little bit strong, but quarterbacks don't feel that. He had a soft shoulder, then he never claimed his flag, got thrown. And this is just embarrassing. Throwing a guy back. So go back, go back on that one, Mel. That was the bigger back that we had from Canada. And I always talk about, don't see sides. He got us behind a truck. This kid was from Nigeria, but he was trying to learn the game. But this right here, he, he never sat down. And this kid's way smaller than him. So that's why we said, you got to get there with urgency and close that window. And his position wasn't bad. He just didn't have no power because he never shot his hits. Can we get the, uh, we're we'll probably out of time for the open field. But you guys got in only a couple minutes. You guys got any questions about drills, philosophies? I got a question. So one of the issues I'm having is with my guy, my QBs is understanding how the running back is supposed to block. So when we get out on the field, we're looking at film because they're not getting So is there a difference on how your running back attacks? So we got a Sam coming out deep. So we got Will coming out on the on D gap, right? Mm -hmm. Or if we get Mike coming uh, up the A gap, does the, depending on where the blitz comes from, does it change how the running back attacks? Yeah, I'm glad you said that. So, just like most of our stuff can transfer over when you're running the ball, you're blocking. So I'll stick with the D gap or outside rush. Right. Same thing. I've been there. We see sides. Same if you're inside that, cut him in half. You know, no one, nowhere in the rule book say you got to sit down and take everything that that kid got. And that's what, the, that's what, the, that's what ends up happening. He takes him on, he gets blocked back into, into the court, into, into the court, court, and he can't. Yeah. So we in this, we go here, not like the one where the right pin, we're able to turn here, mm -hmm. I'm fine. If he goes up field, that's fine. So then we pin, yeah. and we're going to just go ahead if you want to go up there. So invite him that way. Correct. So we come in half, and there's a way to do it. But and then you'll get guys that try to slide out and cover them in the right. lane. Now the A gap rusher, B gap rusher, right. you got to cover him up. So you just go, you meet him, you don't wait. We cover him up, yeah. Right. You, you, your, your advantage is to close that gap, and you cover him up. Say, so Coach, we'll cover him up. Cover him up means you got to get him wherever he goes, or whatever move, you can't pick a side on that one. You can't cut him in half with A, B gap. You got to cover him up. So, so. OK. Oh. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Um, thank you all.